And a very special good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition, a midweek edition of the Morning Briefing here on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV. Jeff DeForest along with Mike Luby Lubitz. Trying to get in the spirit of the thing. Uh, do you have to be dyslexic to read this? Is it coming out backwards here? A little March Madness, Luby. March Madness. That's what it's all about. And uh, th- this, this is a week where you can do a little research, you degenerate sickos out there. You can do a little research and maybe find yourself a path to make a few bucks, a little bit of cash in the early rounds of the NCAA tournament. Is it worth your investment of time, Mike Louie Lube? It's Mr. Basketball. What do you think? Is it worth it to watch some of these, as we like to deem them, the weenie conference tournaments to see if there's a team in there? And I'm not talking about St. Mary's, I guess, if you're talking about the West Coast Athletic Conference. Gonzaga's been representative, and this is one of the good things that happened yesterday. Gonzaga lost. So all those wise guys can shut their fucking mouths about Gonzaga. (laughs) Don't you hate this conversation every year? It seems like it turns it as well. You better watch out for Gonzaga. Gonzaga hasn't done shit. (laughs) Holy John Stockton. The last time Gonzaga was really relevant was on the old series, the GE College Bowl. I don't know if many of you are old enough to even remember this being on TV. It was one of the pioneering programs in the early days of television, the GE College Bowl. And they matched three supposed intellectual universities against each other in kind of a quiz show a showdown, a Jeopardy type of showdown. And Gonzaga routinely what would end up in the winner's circle there. So they're very smart at Gonzaga. But can they play basketball at a championship level? I don't know, Louis. Oh, what do you think? Do they ever win a championship oh, in our know. lifetime? Will Mark Few ever win the NCAA tournament? Good question. Now, and this is common also, and it's probably uh, not uh, an unwise theory to uh, examine, where you have a team that isn't necessarily one of the ones that's being talked about all year long, and they start to round into form right around this time of the year, which it appeared that Gonzaga was doing, Libby. Not that I've been following it all that closely. I still think Kelly Olenek is playing for Gonzaga. What the hell do I know about Gonzaga? But uh, nonetheless, uh, whenever they've had the goods, like when they had Adam Morrison or any of these uh, marquee players that everybody thought was going to light it up in the NBA, what happened? Routinely, they would lose in the second round of the tournament, inexplicably get knocked out by some schmink team that you never heard of. And there would be Mark Few very disappointed walking off. And everybody would say the announcers, well, that's one hell of a coach just got defeated there. And not to impugn his integrity, he's done a nice job, but it's it's not happening, people. And no further evidence of that was given to us last night as St. Mary's triumphs over Gonzaga. Thank you very much, St. Mary's. But those aren't the type, kind of teams that we're looking for, Luby. We're looking for a team we can make a score on. I was watching. Now, can you make a case? Uh, do you know where Oakland plays its basketball and what city it originates from? Oakland. You would think right away, huh? California, very natural oh. thing. Okay. They're in the Horizon Conference, and they won the Horizon Conference Championship behind a guy named Trey Townsend, who was the Horizon Conference Player of the Year. This guy was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar last night. He was unbelievable. Fantastic. He's not that tall, uh, but uh, nonetheless, a power player, lays down low in the post, makes a lot of conversions around a basket, a variety of fashions, left-handed hooks, right-handed hooks. Kid was sensational, and, and they prevail over Milwaukee. Oakland from Auburn Hills, Michigan, Luby. Auburn Hills, Michigan. Can we make a case for these guys, or are we dreaming? Can they win a game in the NCAA tournament? Horizon Conference champions. Uh, They have a coach there, Greg Campy. Have you heard of Greg Campy? This is one of those guys that is the epitome of what college athletics, intercollegiate athletics, is all about, my friend. Uh. The pure scent of amateurism. It's uh, just, it's all over this Oakland program. With Greg Campy, he's been the coach there for 40 years. One school. 40 years. He's one of nine guys that has been in a school for 25 years or more, currently active on the college coaching scene. 40 years, the same school. Now, it would be common for somebody like this. I mean, we're, we're waiting for Dusty May of FAU to get swallowed up. Louisville job is open now. Is he a candidate there? I don't know. We have him as a candidate everywhere. Dusty May, who made the huge run. You, you, you make a run like that to the Final Four with a team that is so nondescript and unrecognized. Uh, by the college basketball world, Florida Atlantic University. It was an outpost on a sign on I-95. That was the only recognition that the school had prior to this basketball run that they had last year. Nobody gave a shit about FAU basketball. They didn't even know they had a team. (laughs) This guy puts them on the map. Now, uh, while other coaches, and there were other coaches from last year's tournament who prospered, who ended up uh, scoring uh, unlikely upsets early in the tournament and went on to bigger jobs. It happens. 
It's a matter of routine. I, 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 there may be no more beneficial position to be in than to be the coach of some nondescript, unlikely school that pulls off an upset in the NCAA tournament, and the next thing you know, bingo, Ohio State is calling, or anybody that has a big uh, opening. So, so we're wondering, that's part of the speculation, where will Dusty May of FAU, now their season is not over, they still have their conference tournament, there is a strong likelihood, I would imagine, they're going to make the NCAA tournament, regardless of how they fare in the conference tournament. I, I think they will get into the uh, tournament field. And if they do, do they have to distinguish themselves, or does Dusty May automatically get a better job just based on what he did last year? What do you think? I mean, he'll be offered jobs. He was offered jobs last year. We'll see if it's the kind of job it's, that's worth him leaving. I, I do think he sort of hit his zenith here at FAU. Like, I don't know if he's making them a Gonzaga. Like, I don't know if he's making them a consistent program. There's only so much you're going to do at a job like that. And that's why guys leave. And as content as he seems, he's a young dude and he's moved up pretty fast. Like, I don't see him just staying in FAU for the long haul. And if he, at some point you have to leave or you do start losing that momentum. There's the coaching watch that goes on during a tournament. And, and then this is where you can really make out well, right? Th this is where the cleaning lady always has the advantage because she's not afraid to pick an Oakland over a Purdue or, or one of the higher seats. Can, can you realistically do that? I, I, I don't know that we've seen it, Luby. Have you followed any of this? I mean, you, you're sort of out of it when, when it comes to this sort of stuff. <clears throat> when, are you gonna, when are you going to get involved in, in this uh, all the group therapy that we're trying to do to find a, <laughs> a weenie team that can score an upset in the NCAA tournament? <laughs> you, you got Drake out of the Missouri Valley Conference. They're in. Stetson, the Hatters. Nice. They're in the uh, tournament. James Madison, uh, we've seen them uh, do heroic things in the past, of course. James Madison making a big run into the Final Four. Samford, which uh, I thought was a dog track somewhere in Florida, but it turns out it's a college in uh, Alabama. Samford, uh, they're in the tournament. There are others. Um, and, and as I said, this is the essence of what college basketball is all about, right? A guy like Greg Campy with Oakland, does he score one victory in the NCAA tournament? Does he even get one Oh, God. 40 years at the same school, Luby. 40 fucking years this guy's been in Auburn Hills, Michigan, coaching uh, Oakland, which, uh, like I said, if I didn't know better, I would swear that they just flew in from California. I was looking for a bunch of surfing guys on there. But uh, interesting uh, the way this is all developing and shaping up. Uh, I, I don't know about, uh, is, is it, well, what's Lunardi's first name? Is it uh, Joe Lunardi? Joe Lunardi. Joe Lunardi. Boy, this guy looks, uh, I mean, he, he looks like a shot fighter, doesn't he? <laughs> he's aged a hundred years. I mean, how many times can you run that same gambit on TV and get away with it and make it interesting? The uh, last four out or whatever that is. What is it? First four out last four in. Is that the way it goes? Or is it the last four in first four out? Yes. Which is last it? Four in first four out. They're the last okay. They, they have uh St. John's yeah. and Rick Patino in there. 40 to one to win it all. Is that worth a wager? 40 to one. They're no. not gonna. They're not gonna win the championship this year. They're barely even qualifying for the tournament. What are you talking about? They may get yeah. knocked down in their own conference tournament. We'll see what they do in the conference tournament. And Patino's the kind of guy that could get on a run, so you could see them winning a couple games. Look, it all depends on the brackets. Like you get excited now, this does nothing. You have to see what the bracket is. You have to see what where. That's how you know the teams are going to make a run, the small teams. What really kind of favorable treatment will Duke get is always one of the questions okay. that you have to ask yourself. It's one of the four questions. It's kind of like yeah. uh, the four questions of Passover. I mean, uh, why is this night different from all other nights? Because uh, Duke gets screwed. That would be that would be an exceptional uh, occurrence if it happened, but uh, that's not happening, right? Duke's going to be accommodated very well and usually with the softest path. Well, when Coach K was there, I don't know, does Shire have the same kind of pull with these committees? No, probably they, not. they usually make sure it, it's just a, a veritable stepping stone to the championship in the final four for Duke. They try to ensure that there's nothing in their path, right? Path of least resistance, but it uh, doesn't always work out that way. And we're always happy about that. I, is that your favorite team to see get knocked out of the tournament first, Duke? I, I would have to oh, say yeah. it would be mine. Yes. A hundred percent. Mostly tainted by uh, the continued uh, analysis and, and uh, color commentary of one Jay Billis. Who makes you, I mean, if you didn't hate Duke to begin with, you really hate them after seeing Jay Billis, don't you? Or hearing <laughs> Jay Billis do a ball game. If you wanted to inspire, I, I mean, never mind these clever slogans uh, that are in the end zone in the NFL and on the back of helmets, uh, let's eradicate and uh, do away with hate. It, it's okay to hate Jay Billis. It really is, watching him uh, do basketball games. But we're going to get a lot of it. Uh, I kind of miss, uh, where's Dick Vitale at health-wise, uh, Luby? Is he okay? Is he back doing any kind I of announcing? I haven't seen him. Forever. So I don't know. I, I yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I know he had health issues. He's older. 
Exactly. Don't you need him to spark this up? I know a lot of people think he became a caricature of himself. That's a common thing to say about a guy that really has kind of uh, worn out his welcome. Maybe as uh, we have here on the morning briefing. Oh, well, he's just become a caricature of himself. I, I, I don't know. I, I like the caricature. The, the enthusiasm that's infused into college basketball by Dick Vitale, even if you think the man is bordering on being insane, still is the kind of thing that uh, gets you uh, emotionally involved in the game a little bit more than you normally would. Although uh, now, with, with everybody betting their brains out on these ball games, uh, I would think, will, will this be the biggest betting event ever in the history of the NCAA tournament with all these various uh, betting options that people have now? Every year, I would imagine, they uh, continue to set the record. All right, uh, no idea, Luby, who's going to win it all? What do you think? Are you going to make any kind of prediction before this thing gets underway? No, no. I mean, you have to see the brackets. That's Because you'll think the, a team will go all the way, and then they get a weird-ass... Uh, matchups. I mean, and that's the thing with the, the small teams and small conferences, like their matchup is everything. So yes. And it's usually yeah. monumental to try and overcome. Yeah, I'd have to see. I, I don't know. Yeah. I say Mary's I know is it actually took out Gonzaga. So they're a team that people like, I guess are sort of interested in our buddy. The professor has been high on them. We'll say this week, this week we'll tell you a lot to cover tournaments only matter so much, but you can see teams that are sort of putting it together. Um, UM, FAU was really putting it together last year by the conference tournaments, and I think that helped propel them. What happened to those guys, by the way? My God. Yeah, they were they, they ended the season with 10 straight losses. They're a disaster. And, and yes, they, they had injury issues. The ACC was massively down. And for what they brought back, even with injury issues, to be like that, we love Coach Larinaga, but that was a fucking disaster. Disaster. 10 straight. Happened including getting clobbered yesterday by uh, Boston College, who was supposed to be very bad this year and uh, ended up doing okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a Final Four team, you, you talk about how tough it is to repeat. They don't even get back into the tournament, the University of Miami, and finish on a slide that makes you – it's almost alarming to see the way that their season they're just That's absolutely right. discombobulated. They, they weren't they weren't really showing the kind of, uh, kind of talent that they had a year ago. Uh, when when uh, they made this phenomenal run, but uh, geez, to finish it on an 11 or 10 game losing streak, including first round of the ACC tournament to Boston College, as the Maitre D used to tell me at the Don McGreb restaurant on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles when he was uh, seat uh, a group of dentists or whatever from Encino instead of the movie <laughs> stars we were accustomed to. Such ugliness, such ugliness. That's what it is. All right, uh, I, I don't know that we gave you any uh, kind of insight. What did I give you? Nothing. I, I told you that Greg Campy had been at Oakland for 40 years. Nobody would have known that, right? Not even Campy. Does he realize he's been there 40 years? As Probably not. <laughs> One of those guys that would be really easy to root for. So uh, we're going to root for Oakland in the tournament a little bit. Uh, Wagner also got in there. Well, Wagner, Wagner. They got into go. the tournament over uh, Mary Mack, who was a tough luck team, right? Last year they would have qualified. But they had to sit out a little moratorium uh, period uh, where because they'd made the transition to Division One by some screwy uh, NCAA rule uh, and the parameters and guidelines that they go by, uh, which who would pay attention to that anymore? Who would pay attention to it? Nobody. Uh, they didn't qualify for the NCAA tournament because uh, they hadn't been in Division One long enough, apparently. And, and so this year they, they lose in, in a nail-biter final to uh, Wagner. Couldn't get into the tournament. Merrimack, which... Uh, doesn't sound like the kind of school that you would think that you would bet a ton of money on to win the NCAA tournament or even get in. Uh, so uh, Wagner gets in there. Uh, we need teams. we got to find one, Louie. I, I think you really need to research this over the next uh, week or so. We'll see, we'll see what, happen, what, the, what happens selection Sunday. I have a much better idea coming into Monday than, than I do today. And we'll have three days. The tournament doesn't start till Thursday. So I don't want your first uh, round bracket to look like the usual butcher job. Where uh, sure, there's nope. nothing but lines through teams yeah, that uh, you sure. would. Nope. <laughs> Do you always uh, end up picking the higher seed? Now you know that the five versus twelve is uh, you know going to be a, at four. least one of those four games is going to yep. go to the twelve seed. There's no doubt yep. about that. But uh, yep. and it happens every year. Sometimes three out of four of them go to the twelve seed. But I mean, and is that where we start looking for upsets, or do you look even lower down at this point? Yeah, to me, to predict fifteen twos is a lot. Like it happens when we see 16 ones now, but I, it's hard for me to predict that. <laughs> like, I think you're reaching when you like Purdue. Yeah. They lost as a, a, a top four seed or top eight seed, whatever the hell they were. But are you picking Purdue to lose to Fairleigh Dickinson? Then you're a fucking suitsayer or yeah. you're on the Fairleigh Dickinson and you were really hoping for your alma mater. I, I, it's hard for me to predict those. 
but yeah, I mean, 12 fives, 100 percent, 13 and fours. You see, you, you'll see a lot of those, and those I'll I'll do at least one of each of those. At least. All right. Well, we're getting ready, man. We're getting ready to roll the dice here, my friend. It's going to be good. March Madness. I'm already full of it. I, I, I think I have gone insane watching all of these weenie tournaments. I mean, what the fuck am I doing with my time? What happened to my life? I'm watching Oakland, Milwaukee last night. All right, we got to get out of here. It's uh, been a lot of fun being with you. Uh, Selection Sunday is coming up right around the corner, and then we'll have more information on that. And uh, we'll try to get you some insight into what's happening. We have a couple of basketball handicappers we actually have great respect for. So we'll uh, pass along uh, whatever they have for us uh, during the course of the tournament. And you know, it was another one of those things where uh, – you're thinking, should I do it this year? I almost, I almost pulled the trigger on it. Couldn't do it. Get out to Vegas for the first round of the tournament. Isn't that what you want to do? I, I guess you can find the sports book atmosphere now in a lot of different places. You are, but there's nothing like Vegas. That would be the place to be, wouldn't it? Uh, everybody yelling and screaming and going nuts. It's Not fantastic. Like it. All right, uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Another edition of the morning briefing from Mike Luby Lubitz. I'm Jeff DeForest. Thanks for tuning in to uh, today's show. As uh, it's always a pleasure to be with you here on Caffeine TV and NoFilter.net.